this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the 2017 Surface Pro, or the new Surface Pro. It is not the Surface Pro 5 because Microsoft says they haven't come up with something with the, that has enough changes inside to call it a Surface Pro 5. Okay, I admit it looks a lot like the Surface Pro 4 does, and you put them next to each other, unless you're looking at the little vents on the edges and just how softened up the angles are, you couldn't tell them apart. Anyway, and the type covers, you know, they're mix and match. You could put one of these on an old Surface Pro 4 and fool somebody at first too, right? But guess what? There's actually a lot of improvements inside, and it's pretty exciting. At first I thought, eh, you know, it doesn't sell like much, but the processing power inside of this, how much improved the cooling system is, the battery life, the pen, it's all really good stuff. We're going to look at it now. So the new Surface Pro looks uncannily like the last generation Surface Pro 4 because, well, it is almost identical. And yeah, they're using the same casing. They're using the same ports. No USB-C. That's right. No, no Thunderbolt 3 either. Microsoft says that they asked people and people said that it wasn't necessary. What people were they asking? Not you, not me, probably. Yeah. Anyway, that's somewhat ameliorated by the Surface Pro dock, which I have and I do use. And it's true, one little magical connector, and you've got display ports out, you've got a lot more USBs, you got, you know, you're good to go with that. Anyway, the, the changes on the design are very, very subtle. The the little fan outlet, the little groove around here where you can see the little notches is is changed to a slightly different design. Rather than describe it, you're looking at it on screen, so you can see what I mean. And the edges are a little bit softer, less abruptly um, contoured. So it feels a little bit better in the hand. It's not meaningfully lighter. Uh, there's, it, there's really no other change. The other thing is the new type covers, the signature type cover. That's just a fancy pants word for more expensive cover with Alcantara covering on it. It looks nice, and I guess, you know, the new trendy color is the more subdued color, colors like this cobalt blue, which could be mistaken for... Uh, tasteful gray in certain lighting, a burgundy color, and then the, the more, you know, stately titanium kind of look, the silvery kind of cover. So uh, it's functionally the same. I know you're not going to believe it unless I rip these covers off. So here we go. They are functionally the same. You can mix and match the old and new cover. In fact, if you only want to spend 129, you can get the standard previous generation style black type cover. They just don't give you any choices for color. So it snaps right on there in the same way. It works the same way. Travel is the same, backlining is the same. The only difference is the old one had keyboard brightness, but it did not have display brightness. You had to hit FN plus Dell or Backspace as a shortcut key for that. The new one gives you actual brightness keys, which I think most people are going to like. Is it worth paying $160 for that? No, not so much. There is no fingerprint scanner on this in the new signature edition type cover, so I don't know what's going on, if they're going to have one later or not, or they're going to figure that $160 is enough money for a keyboard. Who's going to pay $200? just to get the fingerprint scanner, especially because you have Windows Hello in all of its glory, the facial recognition camera, which typically works very well. It's it's unchanged, the camera's front and back, so we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about cameras on there. It's being a little picky right now. I'm having a little trouble with it consistently recognizing me, and I bet there's going to be a software update, you know Microsoft, to address that. The other physical change on the outside is the angle of repose, maximum angle of repose, repose or tilt it down. As you can see, this is the new Surface Pro here. It can go a lot lower. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, honestly, because I kind of like the old angle where it stopped at. And, and the nice thing about wherever the stop angle is, is it's really firm. It's there, obviously. Um, oh my goodness, they're magnetized together. Look at that. <laughs> So if you want to rest your hand very hard on it, well, it's you can't make it go down any further. So I leave that up to you as to whether you think that's useful. Fortunately, the the hinge on these things is pretty firm. So you can rest your hand on this pretty well. It's going to slide across the table. Okay, here we go. And it's not going down anyway. So I don't consider that a deal breaker, even though I personally generally don't have a need to go that flat on the table with it. The pen magnet is still over here. That's tenacious. That's a little pit bull, isn't it? They made it a little bit stronger from what I can tell because that's really on there and it hasn't gone flopping off even with that. It's usually that sideways thing, which is the way they design it that way in parts so it's easier to take it off. But I haven't had it flop loose in my bag the way that this one does. Now there's also changes when it comes to the pen. And here's another neat party trick with magnets. Huh? Who knew they stick together? What a surprise. The old pen, available in a couple of colors, had the little pocket protector clip right here. The new pen, which will also be available in several different colors to match those type covers, though only this color is available right now, has no pocket protector clip. Otherwise, it looks the same. It's still using Ntrig technology for those of you who follow those things. Microsoft bought Ntrig. They're a competitor, Wacom, and they make these pens. 
However, the change is you don't get the pen in the box anymore. Microsoft used to make a big deal about, look, we're awesome. We gave you the pen that makes sure you try it out. We have Windows Creator Update on here with the Windows Ink workspace and features, but no bloody pen in the box for you anymore. But the prices haven't gone down. So that annoys me, okay? Sure, the price of the new pen went up. The old was 60 bucks, the new one's $100. Funny how it's priced just like the Apple Pencil. Granted, the new pen is a lot better. Okay, it costs more, it's better, I get that, whatever. But either lower the price or include it in the box. Okay, now that I've complained about that, more levels of pressure sensitivity, 4,096. Now, part of that's because of there, there's new hardware, there's new digitizer hardware going on inside of the new Surface Pro. So using this pen doesn't guarantee you getting all the features on an older Surface product using Entrick. Hopefully Surface Studio, given how mm, expensive it is, I would like to think so, and also being the most recent thing prior to the Surface. But lower initial force of activation, nine grams. It's noticeable. One thing I really didn't like about Entrick is if you sketch naturally, you're not always bearing down and, you know, you, now you can sketch with a pretty light hand. So it's certainly on par with Wacom AES, and it's not quite Wacom EMR or even Apple Pencil level, but it's close enough. I think it's going to suit most people. I have a fairly light hand, and I and pretty happy with it. The other important thing is tilt. Finally, yeah, it used to be only Wacom EMR, the high-end ones would get you that, and the Apple Pencil gets you that. So that was sorely lacking. It's here. Now, the trick is the program has to support it. I'm sure Adobe Photoshop will be updated soon enough, just like they updated to support the surface dial and all that sort of thing, but not yet. So I can't show you tilt in Photoshop. I can't do it yet. It's supposed to be coming to Clip Studio Paint in July. Right now, Microsoft's own sketching application does support it, and it works wonderfully. So nice. Uh, particularly, that's useful for people who draw. If you're just using this for note-taking, I don't think it matters so much. You might have a little bit more natural feel when you write because, you know, you naturally tilt your pen when you're writing. But other than that, yeah. We're going to take a quick look at Windows Sketchpad because it supports the new features like Tilt. By the way, you can use the Surface Dial with this on screen if you wish. Since this is such a teeny screen, I prefer to use it off on the side on the desk. So here we go. This is your, your ink pen right here. Right? Now this one doesn't do Tilt, but if we switch to Pencil, here's our up and down, and there's what happens if I go sideways. Look at that. That's pretty darn sweet. I can't wait till more programs support that. So how about diagonal line jitter? That's always a big issue. And we're going pretty slow. That's much improved. Now I could try using a ruler. Now rulers get iffy. If you have a metal edge ruler, keep in mind it's conductive. So it might actually mess with the sensor. You can't always trust rulers. This is clear plastic. It should be okay. And it works. But look at this. I can actually mark through the clear plastic. Do you see what's happening under there? That's pretty darn weird and amazing. Anyway, yeah, the, the device just slipped a little bit, but the jitter is markedly reduced on this. Now, this program doesn't really seem to have any stroke smoothing, so I found this to be a little bit more jittery than what I would usually draw in general. And so it's going to depend on the program you use as well, but this is, this is good stuff. Now, the eraser is still here on the back side, if you wish, as well. Of course, you have the little hidden buttons over here, which... Uh, there's in Photoshop I couldn't find any way to assign these in a useful manner, which is unfortunate. You can change the nibs if you want. You can use the old Surface Pen nibs. It's a tight fit, but you can do it. But I kind of like the, the HB nib that it comes with, and it's not too, too slippery on the glass. Now we have the new Wacom Bamboo Ink Pen here. It's a dual protocol pen, which means that it can do both Wacom AES digitizers like that and the Yoga 720, and it can do Entrig. So this one does not do tilt. Wakey, wakey, there we go. You see, I'm just getting regular lines. So for those of you who are wondering about that, this is a $70 pen. Uh, it's not giving me any tilt. It does seem to have plenty of pressure sensitivity, though. Now, for our latency test, we've got a little slow motion video to show you. Remember, this is slow motion, so it's not really that slow in real life. When I do things like go wee like that, it's going to look worse than it does, which goes to show you that this is pretty adequate in terms of latency. I'm not seeing any stroke lagging behind, but we'll show you slow motion just to give you an idea.
So of course, this is the update that brings Intel 7th generation KB Lake CPUs. These are still dual core 15 watt Ultrabook CPUs. There's no quad core CPUs in Surface Pros ever. And there's really not enough room for them. They're 12.3 inch thin and light devices. I mean, the tablet weighs well under two pounds by itself. Uh, yeah. Intel graphics, integrated graphics. So if you go for the high end Core i7, you can get Intel Iris 640 graphics for a little extra graphical oomph. The big story here though, is the Core i5 is now fanless. Now the Core M3 always was because Core M CPUs are designed to run without fans. They don't need them. Core i CPUs do need fans. So this is pretty good engineering feat here on Microsoft's part. And they have a fascinating spider looking almost heat copper heat sink design going on inside of here. And you'll not see it yourself ever because believe me, it's hard to take one of these apart. It, it, you have to heat up the, the, the glue on this and suck the display off of the shell just to get to the inner. So nothing in here, you're going to be upgrading yourself. You're not going to see the pretty heat sink. Anyway, silence. A lot of you bought the Core M3 mostly because you wanted silence. You didn't want to hear the fans. And the Surface Pro 4 was known to be chuffy and huffy at times. So now if you really wanted that Core i5, you can get it. And that's a pretty nice thing and still maintain silence. Now we have the Core i5 with eight gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD. As ever that configuration has been around, it's 1299. You can get a Core M3 with four gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD starting at 799 and so on. The pricing stru structure has remained the same for the various options. You can go upward of $2,000 if you want the most maxed out configuration. But I was a little worried about this Core i5 not having a fan. I was worried about it throttling or running way too hot. And no, it's not throttling. And it's really keeping up. The power limit is high on this and it, it, it doesn't really throttle. I was running Civ 6 on this, in fact, and it's disconcerting to not hear the fan because you know it's working hard. You run Civ 6 on any laptop, that game is going to get it toasty. And I thought, okay, it's being silent. It's probably being destroyed. And as you can see here, we after looking at sieve running there these these are the cpu temperatures that we have the temperatures inside are perfectly fine and that's after playing for a half an hour and dead silence now the back did get pretty hot the the top centerish area the, the top third of the device does get pretty hot and you can see the temperatures on screen now but when you're doing anything else, if you're doing Photoshop, which I use a lot on this, I use it for editing photos and for digital painting, and no, it doesn't get hot like that. You'll feel it. It's always warm in the top third, that same spot there, but not nearly as hot at all. Nothing that's going to burn you. And the display is a bit warmer in that top third also. If you're resting your hand on the screen, you'll feel it. So that's quite an achievement for something that has no fan and not much power. And the Core i7 so far, we got to play with that some and... The fan comes on, but it's not loud. It's much better tuned, and the cooling is so much better on it that it, it's not annoying. Now, I'd expect a little bit less battery life from the Core i7, not because it's so much more powerful. You still got two cores, all that sort of thing, but it does have a fan to spin up that's going to use a little bit more power. The display size and resolution are unchanged from the last generation. That's 12.3 inches. IPS pixel sense display 2736 by 1824 resolution, which is 267 PPI. It has gone even a little bit brighter and the Surface Pro is already pretty darn bright. We measured it at 465 nits. Full sRGB coverage on there, 78% of Adobe RGB, so a little bit up on the Adobe RGB. To my eye, the colors look a little bit more zingy and saturated on this. The gamma and the white point, meh, but they can be calibrated out. And from the factory, you know, they did still need some calibration. They may be closer than some other laptops on the market, but not perfect yet. Contrast is ever, as you can see, is very high there. So overall, some of the nicest displays on the market and no complaints when it comes to that. It's very good. Now, mine doesn't have any backlight bleed, neither did the other review loaner that we had in-house. So take that with a grain of salt. You might see some IPS displays do get some backlight bleed. That's not uncommon, but Microsoft's quality control generally seems pretty good. The speakers are still full, rich, and loud, which was true of the last generation. For a tablet in the 12-inch size category, it punches well above its weight. Still has Marvel Avistar Wi-Fi on board, 802.11ac, and it's behaved well in our tests, so I have no complaints about that. The Intel display driver, still, there's no Intel display driver list in Add Remove Program, so you don't get the usual right-click on the desktop and get those Intel 3D settings and power management settings. In fact, a lot of this is pretty much hidden. This is like power plans for dummies almost. If you tap on the battery icon, you'll just see a simple slider that goes from best battery life to best performance. 
Often when doing things like benchmarks, I benchmarked it both ways just to see what was going to happen there. Most of them didn't change. The only one where it made a huge difference was PC Mark 8, which dropped down to around 2,800. So it dropped many hundreds of points when it was in the best battery life mode, but nothing else, and including real life use and doing things like Photoshop on lots of layers and some pretty heavy testing was really affected. And I think part of the way that again, the good battery life is with this pretty strong power management that's going on in here and also the efficiency of KB Lake also. And if you look at the traditional power plant settings under control panel advanced settings, you'll see there's actually very few things that you can tweak and change. You can't set minimum and maximum CPU power states or anything like that yourself. So that leads into battery life. The battery is up to 45 watt hours now, which is about the same thing as you find in a 13 inch Ultrabook. And that's up from 38 watt hours in the previous generation. The new charger looks identical to the old charger. It's 44 watt. And the only difference is the output voltage on the old ones, 12 volts, the new ones, 15 volts. The old charger does work. I have tried it. It works just fine. If you have one sitting around, you can still continue to use it. It still has that little USB port on there so you can charge a USB accessory like your smartphone or something like that too. So of course Microsoft claiming crazy high battery run times for the Surface Pro, for, uh, new Surface Pro rather, and for the Surface laptop, and you know, they're claiming like 14 hours and that's, that's crazy. I suppose if you had it at minimum brightness, just streaming a very efficient video codec, you might do that or playing a local video even better, not using the Wi-Fi. But still, Surface Pro 4 was not known for its fantastic battery life. And on average, I've been getting about eight hours, which is really solid. And that's not just with light use, the MS Office or something like that. That's with streaming video. And today's modern processors and integrated GPUs are very efficient, actually, for playing back video, but doing things again, like using Photoshop, using Dreamweaver, using Illustrator. So those are some heavier tasks there. And it's still getting me about eight hours. And that's at 40% brightness, which is pretty darn bright because the display is very bright. So as ever, it's a pricey proposition. Sure, the Core M starts at $799, but you still have to add on your keyboard. Who, who can't resist the pretty new colors? So that means the $160 keyboard out there. The pen's another $99 if you're going to use the pen, and it is one of the signature features of the product. But you know what? This is really, really a nice improvement here over the last generation. And it's one of the nicest, if not the nicest, 12-inch Windows tablet on the market. Still, Microsoft just keeps doing the right things, I have to say. I mean, you, you've got battery life here. You've got a beautiful display going on. You've got a much improved pen experience. And it's silent if you get the Core i5. It's not even loud if you get the Core i7. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. You can even do some light gaming on this thing. It's pretty nice, and it's still a very versatile product. If you want to compare it to something like, here's the Surface Laptop. We're going to be reviewing this, too. This is nice if you're only interested in a traditional laptop design. But sure, this one still has that versatility, and it's priced about the same, too. We have basically the same configuration going on here. The Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD is priced at $1,300, just like this one. But still, you know, it's nice to have choices, isn't it? So I leave it up to you as to which of these you think is the more interesting product. And again, we'll be reviewing the Surface Laptop, too. So that's the new Surface Pro, or the 2017 Surface Pro, or whatever you want to call it that's not Surface Pro 5. Again, it's a lot of improvements. It's quite nice. It could even be tempting if you own a Surface Pro 4 to upgrade from this. And certainly if you have an older Surface Pro model, or if you're new to the game, a lot of good stuff inside. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and claws up if you liked it.